How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be changing a wheel bearing in my 5.9 Cummins 3rd gen. It's a 2003 round 2500, but changing a wheel bearing will be pretty similar on any truck. So the process will be similar if you have a different vehicle. I was just driving down the highway today and I felt something was weird here. My truck started kind of pulling in the grooves of the road and then my ABS light came on. And so I knew right away I had a, a wheel bearing go out. It was also smoking from my brake pad rubbing on my rotor. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you right now what it looks like. Right now I just have the truck up on jack stands there. I put two jack stands under the axle just so that we can rotate, like turn the tires. It'll be a little bit easier to do this wheel bearing. And, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna show you what this wheel bearing looks like right now. But keep in mind, there should be no play here. It should be nice and solid. So it should not be doing that. So yeah, that's bad. I ended up getting a, a deck truck to come pick it up just because I didn't want to run any risk of losing a tire on the way back to the shop. So, but yeah, if you find the video useful, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you got questions, ask in the comments or shoot me a message on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. But anyways, guys, let's uh, start changing this uh, wheel bearing. Usually I like to work on a nice clean truck, but I didn't choose for my wheel bearing to go now, so this is what we're dealing with. But anyways, first thing, obviously, we're gonna take off this tire. Now I'm gonna take this whole caliper off. I'm just gonna take these two bigger bolts and then the whole thing will fall off uh, together. And I'm just gonna use a bungee strap or something to kind of hang it up here so that we're not putting a lot of stress on this brake line. Also, we can clip this ABS line out of there as well. Should be able to remove your rotor now, but mine's kind of seized on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this uh, two by four at the back and then I can hit it with a hammer. If you're gonna change your rotor and your brakes, then you could just beat it with a hammer, but I'm gonna be re reusing this, so I don't wanna wreck it. Got the rotor off, I had to get the big boy hammer out. It was seized on there pretty good. Sometimes you can heat this up if it's just not coming off, but we got her. See how I'm also, it's a little wet here. Uh, it's wet on the other side too. Those are my diff seals on the inside of the diff, leaking a little bit of oil, but I don't think I'm gonna worry about those just because that's a pain in the ass job. So maybe when the other wheel bearing goes, then I'll, uh, then I'll do it, but I'm just gonna leave it for right now because I check my diffs regularly and I very rarely have to add oil. So another thing too though, make sure you check your other wheel bearing just because if this one went, there's a good chance your other one is close by. Look at all this metal and crap that fell out. You can kind of see all this stuff. Like this one, it's pooched. But anyways, now we're going to, um, let's take this cotter pin out and take this axle nut off. Uh, we'll do that next. Okay, I got this nut off. I got some free all here. I'm just gonna spray the back of these four bolts here. We're going to get them from, so there's one, two, and then the other two are on the other, other side. So I'm gonna get these two out, and then I'm going to turn the wheel to the left and go in from the other side and get those other two bolts out. Um, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take those two bolts out, and then make sure you unplug your ABS wire up there, or if you want, you can unscrew it, pop it over there, whatever you prefer. But once we have that out, that should be pretty much it. We're gonna try to pop it off, but a lot of times it gets stuck here on the steering knuckle. So sometimes you need to use an air hammer or a chisel and a punch and a hammer there and get her out. But yeah, I'm gonna get those four hub bolts out and uh, then we'll see how hard it is to get off that steering knuckle. Okay, I got the four uh, wheel bearing slash hub, whatever you wanna call it, got those bolts out. Um, and I disconnected my ABS line. Just keep uh, in mind which way this goes because you're gonna have to put this dust shield back on after. But uh, yeah, this wheel bearing should, if it was brand new, just slide off. Uh, you might want to gently 
kind of tap your axle in a little bit. Um, and yeah, I'm going to kind of strike this with a hammer, try to beat it off a bit and see, I might have to get a punch and a chisel and just hammer it in there. But yeah, we got to separate it off of the, the steering knuckle. Fucking gay. <laughs> Alright, we got a pretty good gap now. I'm gonna use a punch and a hammer. Uh, I accidentally hit this with the hammer, so I'm gonna have to bend this dust shield back out. So try not to hit this if you're beating it off. But uh, yeah, it's coming off. Here is the wheel bearing slash hub assembly. Now that I have this on the ground, I can beat this back down and make it nice and flat again. And uh, then here, before we put this on, I'm just gonna grab a little buffer disc and just kind of give the inside of that a quick little buff. I also like to put copper coat on these axle splines when I am putting a new hub on. And check your axle U-joint here. Just kind of give it some play, make sure that it's not like clumping around in there. Um, mine still feels tight, there's no play on it, so we can pretty much just start putting it back together. All right, just got this guy, just gonna give it a little buff. And then I'll move it and I'll get in there as well. All right, now get your new hub, kind of compare it to the other one, make sure it's the same. Make sure, obviously, if you have an eight lug truck like this you got eight studs and you don't have six or something here's the part number of this one br930502 it's an skf they make really good wheel bearings they're kind of the more high end i guess for aftermarket unless you go to like an off-road company but uh yeah we're gonna get this guy ready to go on gonna grab some copper coat put it on these splines and then we'll kind of hold the dust cover up and we'll try to get this back in place I also put some copper coat just kind of on the inside there just because I know either I'll have to change this again at some point or the next guy who has my chuck he'll have to change it so just try to be nicer to the next guy but uh, yeah we're gonna try to put this on I'm pretty sure we have to run this wire through here first and it's gonna go up kind of in this little pocket there so maybe when you put this on run the wire through it first and uh, yeah we'll try to mount this thing in remember which way this uh, abs line went so this abs sensor points up to the top on this truck um, but yeah that's all there is really to it we're going to put it in and then we'll get some of these uh, hub bolts started and i'm going to put some blue loctite on the hub bolts just because you don't ever want something like this coming loose especially if you're on the highway or something There we go, something like that. So now you're gonna have to make sure that these holes in this dust cover line up with the holes in your hub. And you might have to kind of move it around a little bit just so that the holes in the steering knuckle go in. And uh, then we'll, we'll get all four of those bolts just kind of threaded in a little bit and then we'll tighten them. And remember, I'm putting some Loctite on these as well. I'm not tightening it all the way right now. I'm just kind of spinning it in a little bit. So it's nice and started. Same with this one. There you go. Got the other side in now.
So now we can tighten it. I'm just using a half inch impact. Um, I'm gonna kind of snug these side, this side up a little bit. I'm gonna turn the wheel to the right. I'm gonna snug the other side up and I'm gonna hammer on the other side until it doesn't uh, spin anymore. Then I'm gonna come back on this side and I'm gonna hit them again just to make sure they're nice and tight and that everything is seated. Right, now we can get this axle nut back on if I could get it started I might have mushroomed it just a little bit with the hammer so I'll use both hands to get this on but uh, yeah we're gonna get that axle nut on uh, but the wheel bearing is on you can see my studs went through it looks like it's seated there nicely everywhere so uh, yeah this wheel bearing is on Then make sure you get your collar pin in there. And like this, I just hit it with my half inch impact again. Try not to go like over tight, but you gotta also get it so that it lines up there. Uh, if you really want, you can look up a torque spec, but uh, I have not any issues doing this. And put your rotor back on. Now we'll grab this brake caliper and put it back on. And uh, here are my bolts for it. And just like the wheel hub bolts, I like to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on them as well. And this caliper is back on. All right, now you can get your ABS line, clip it back into wherever yours went. If you're on a different truck, it might run a little bit different, but you can secure it, plug it in. And uh, other than that, just put your tire back on, torque your tire to factory specs. Usually it's around 135, 140 foot pounds, somewhere around there if you're on a eight lug truck. There she is, all back together. So if you enjoyed the video or if it helped you out, please like, please subscribe. It helps me out like crazy. Again, if you've got questions, feel free to ask in the comments or you can shoot me a message on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. But anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one.